Hello and welcome to this week's Wild Spirits News. My name is Sibylla and today I'm going to tell you how not to go broke this Christmas or festive season depending on what it is that you celebrate. Now this is a time of the year that is supposed to promote the spirit of giving, of love and these are beautiful, beautiful things. However, in our day and age it often resembles a race to the bottom when it comes to spending more and more money on presents. We feel under pressure to match the monetary, the, the price of the present that we got from that person last year. Our children are under pressure. In, in they, Their peers in school get certain presents and they don't want to be left behind and we don't want to let them to be left behind. And all in all, it amounts to, to uh, stress and exhaustion and a rush to the shops rather than what the season was originally meant to be about. Now when I talk to people about it, they often suggest, why don't you just arrange with the people in your life to not give each other any presents? Now this might be not doable with children, but your adult family members or friends, you could always say to them, do you know what, we we'll, we'll just won't give each other any presents. Now, if you're mature enough to do this and really still enjoy the season, then more power to you, do that. Personally, I've often felt a little deprived of, deprived of the joy of giving, of, of being able to select something and lovingly present it. Giving and receiving is a very powerful exchange of energy and love. So today, in today's video, I have three alternatives for you of maintaining the spirit of giving and love without going broke. The first thing I'd like to suggest is to put a limit on on your spending or on the kind of present that you're giving. What do I mean by this? Well, first of all, you need to arrange this, obviously, with the people in your life. You need to all agree. So you could agree on a limit of the monetary value of the present that you give each other. You could say no more than 20 euros per present or, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. It can be a real challenge if you set the value really low to still find something that that person might like. It might might you have to you have to be a bit creative and and so it can it can actually be a nice thing but you could also if you don't like to do this if you don't like monetary values you could set a limit in the kind of present that you're giving to each other for example you could you could agree that nobody buys any presents this year which means that you're going to have to make something so you could craft something you could write them a story you could knit them something, you could bake them something, whatever. It has to be something that you make yourself so you will give your creative energy rather than the energy that is expressed by, by money. The second way of avoiding to go broke is to give each other experiences rather than presents that bought presents. So what do I mean by this? For example, you could give your best friend an evening with you and you at a dinner, like a candlelit dinner with you. You make her a you make her a absolute VIP guest for the night. You 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 cook her a four course dinner in the candlelight with wine and all the rest. And and you know these these especially if it's a good friend, you know what these evenings are like. You'll probably end up talking half the night and laughing your heads off and really bonding over this. This can be a beautiful experience. And you know what? Time is in our day and age where everybody is stressed and rushed off their feet all the time. Time is one of the most valuable things that you can give somebody. And quality time with friends is a is a beautiful, very valuable gift. Or you could fill up your tank and tell your friend, we're doing something for the day, so that's the gift you're giving you're giving her or him a day together. This can this is something that you can wonderfully do with a with a family member, especially an older family member who might not be as mobile on their own anymore. And you say to them, We'll go somewhere and you pick where we go. Now this you, you just drive somewhere. And it could be just the next town, or it could be an hour or two's drive away, and you'll be tourists for the day. You could um, walk around and do a bit of sightseeing. You could go to a museum or something that you would usually not do, especially if it's your own area. We tend to go on holiday to exotic places, but our own country, our own place, we hardly know. So give each other experiences rather than material things. And the third suggestion I'd like to make is to give someone else 
What I mean by that is to volunteer your time together with that other person for some charity or, or cause that you believe in. There's so many possibilities there. I can't go into all of them, but just to give you an idea. Homeless people are always in, 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 in a horrible situation, but especially over the holidays, it can be really, really grim. And to top it all off, over the holidays, there are fewer volunteers and helpers available because so many people have their families. Now, obviously, if you have children yourself and you have to be at home, that there, there can be a this can be a problem, but maybe if you don't, or if you're on your own, or if you just if it's just you and your partner, you could that could be uh, the gift between your partner and yourself that you are volunteering Christmas Eve or Christmas Day in a homeless shelter. You know, handing out food, maybe putting up some decorations, singing some songs, or bringing bringing music and and making it a bit of a beautiful experience for them. It can mean the world and it can make all the difference to somebody to feel like they're still a human being and that they still matter. This can, can make the world of a difference and it gives you, it, it's such an enriching experience to do that and can be a very bonding experience with that person you love that you're doing it with. Or look out at animal shelters. After Christmas, early in the new year, animal shelters get all these unwanted Christmas presents, all those poor puppies that are being, being uh, left behind and they need all the help that they can get and in many cases it's not just money that they want they need people they need hands-on help just volunteer some time together and see how that feels so these were three ways of maintaining the spirit of giving and love of the season without going broke and before I close let me just remind you to remember yourself as well during that season give yourself love give yourself consideration Give yourself the gift of not being stressed this season, of not putting yourself under pressure, of not going broke. Give yourself the gift of some time, of some pampering, perhaps a massage or something. It doesn't have to be something, something expensive. Give yourself the gift of coaching or learning a course, something that you've always wanted to learn, rather than spending all the money on presents that will only leave your bank account stressed and you slightly internally resentful in the end and maintain the spirit of actual giving and love that this season was meant to be about in the first place. Are you a member of the community of Wild Spirits yet? If yes, that's great and if not, go and sign up. All you have to do is go to wildspiritscoaching.com and fill in the little form there. It's 100% spam free and you will get one email per week with free coaching magic background information, recommendations of books and other resources, and some special offers that are exclusive only to subscribers. So go to wildspiritscoaching.com or you can Google Wild Spirits Coaching, that'll get you to my website as well. Thanks for watching.